Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Jack Regal Productions. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about historical significance of the Super Bowl. Um, I was looking back recently and some of the Bronco fans think, oh what a great defense and Trevor Simeon, we can win. Yeah, sure. And I can freaking turn this ceiling into gold. It ain't going to happen with that guy. Reason being is if you go back to 2001, every single quarterback with the exception of Brad Johnson has been the possible Hall of Famer or a very good NFL quarterback. Tom Brady in 01, Brad Johnson who had a decent year for Tampa Bay in 02, Brady in 3, Brady in 4, 2005 Ben Roethlisberger, 2006 Peyton Manning when he was on his game, 2007 Eli Manning, not the best of all time, but he's clutch. 2008, Pittsburgh, Roethlisberger again. 2009, Drew Brees, another excellent, probably a Hall of Famer. Um, 2010, I'm puking on myself here. Let's see, 2010. Oh, Aaron Rodgers, there you go, another possible, probably a Hall of Famer. 2011, uh, Eli again. 2012, Joe Flacco's good quarterback. Asked me about beating the Broncos in the playoffs and that stupid Raheem Moore. He reached and the guy was behind him. He talked about the puking on yourself. There it is. Choke, puke, whatever you want to call it. Raheem Moore cost the Broncos in 2012 a chance at possibly winning a Super Bowl, at least getting there. 2013, Russell Wilson, who I love, one of my favorites, beat the Broncos by 700 points in that game. And that was 43-8. to eight. Ugh. Thank God I won a square. I won like about 500 bucks, so it made it a little bit more serviceable. I hate blowouts. It's been... 10, 10 blowouts and let's see, four, four, eight. eight out of 10 have been more than 10 points. Maybe some of them 20 points. Awful games like last week. Okay, let's get to 2014. That's Brady. 2015, Manning. Even though he wasn't Manning and didn't have a great year, he could run an offense. He could get the Broncos to run the ball better, which they did with him with C.J. Anderson. He probably would have led them to more wins this year. As much as I hated him last year because I thought he sucked nine touchdowns and 17 interceptions. I really, really, really believed that that would be an upgrade. I mean, Trevor the Traction Engine was terrible to me. Sorry. As, as time went on, they figured him out, and he just couldn't throw the ball down the field. He looked like he was scared. He was looking at the rush. The 23 points in 20, 10, 3, 10, 10, 23 points in three games. Awful. They should have been in the playoffs. They're better than the Texans. Granted, they won that cupcake division. They're certainly better than Miami. Miami sucks. Good effort against uh, against Pittsburgh. Also, what, 30-something or 12? Awful. Just terrible. But And then this year's Super Bowl, what do you have? Franchise quarterback, the best of all time, in my opinion, Tom Brady. And then Matt Ryan with 38 touchdowns this year, who's had a pretty good career. At times spotty, at times really good. It was really good 2012, I know that. So, another dueling um, quarterbacks. All right, stay on the game a little bit. Um, earlier on the NFL Network, I posted a video on Facebook. Most people probably looked at it and said, John, what the hell are you doing? Who gives a crap? But anyways, it was by it was Julio Jones of Atlanta getting interviewed, and this guy was so humble. It was unbelievable. He reminded me of Bobby O back in the day. Just didn't take any credit for anything. He says, I do my best for my teammates to help them win. We're all a team. Uh, I want to do my best to get open help Matt Ryan, blah, blah, blah. Then you got Beckham, that piece of crap from the Giants, who's the most me guy in the whole world. I think a lot of receivers and me, too. It was all about them and not about anyone else. Terrell Owens was a diva. He had a great career. He was a diva. Randy Moss was a quitter. Diva and a quitter. Couldn't stand the guy. Plays great. All Oakland begs his way out. Plays great with the Patriots. Two, three years later, he's done. And I'm like, I thought you loved it in New England. That's where you actually had your chance of actually winning. No, no, you cried your way out of town. Then you played for San Fran at the end of your career when you had nothing left at all. And you didn't win a Super Bowl with them either in 2012. That's when Flacco beat Kaepernick. All right, Kaepernick's not a franchise quarterback. He's a bozo. So there you go with that one. Speaking of San Francisco, too. My candidate, who I wanted the most for the Broncos to get, and of course they didn't, Kyle Shanahan, who's got a sharp offensive mind like his father, Mike Shanahan, who coached the Broncos for 2000 and 1995 to like 2008, I think. He was an awesome coach, put up a lot of points, knew how to run the ball, knew how to set up play action, threw the ball if he had to. 
knew how to beat an opponent, kick them in the face and not let them up. Just beat them, choke them, and not let them up. Let Win the game. Third and one, not run the ball into the line. Do some play fakes. And he had Terrell Davis, one of the best running backs of all time in a short period of time, who should be going to the Hall of Fame this year, who I really hope. He deserves it. Anyways, Kyle got the job with the 49ers. And the first thing he has to do is cut Kaepernick's ass. The clown with the national anthem issues about being oppressed. Black people are oppressed. Are you oppressed? You freaking make $14 million, you jackass. There are black people that are oppressed. You're certainly not one of them. So you're the last person who should be saying that. And you're still collecting your paycheck. Why don't you donate a lot of it to that for the people that are oppressed? Help them out. As opposed to just kneeling down in the national anthem or staying the lucky, you big bozo. All right, my rant's over. Now, that was good about talking about Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis played from 1995 to 2001. And... First four years of a career, he had like 1,100, 1,500, 1,750, and 2,000 yards. And he got like 22 touchdowns the year, 2,000 yards. In the history of the NFL, he averages 143 yards a game in the playoffs. The second guy is like Marcus Allen or somebody with 111. Seven straight, sorry, seven straight 100-yard games in the playoffs. Super Bowl MVP, 157 yards, and he had that problem with his migraines where he had to go into the locker room. He missed basically the whole second quarter. He would have had 200 yards easily in that game against Green Bay. Green Bay could not stop him. He was a force to be reckoned with, and the Broncos had not won a Super Bowl to that point. He was the main reason why, and Elway should thank him, because the two Super Bowls he won, had, he had a lot to do with it. Whether he was a decoy in the Super Bowl against Atlanta the next season, or he still ran for 100 yards, but he wasn't the main focal point like he was in the 1997 season. He was huge. He would run by guys and just go all the time. I was telling Matthew about that, uh, about that booker. I said, how come he never breaks a long run? He'll go 10 yards, 12. He never gets that 50-yard run like Elliott got. Like uh, Le'Veon Bell can get. Like the guy from the Falcons, Freeman. This guy never did it. And he supposedly has speed. He probably doesn't know how to read the holes. He doesn't know how to read where the, where the ball carrier is going over to the left. Reading your blocks, picking your spaces. He doesn't know what the hell to do. And that's why they missed C.J. Anderson. I didn't think they would miss him so much. Because I thought he was slow at times. But he had a good four or five games last year. And I'm happy he's coming back now. We always talked about running backs. And I always said that I wanted um, the guy, oh, what the heck's his name? The guy that used to play for the Texans, and he went to Miami and retired. Um, Aaron Foster. I thought he'd be perfect. He was on the Kubiak system, so he knows the zone-blocking scheme. I think he'd be wonderful for that team. Maybe he wouldn't have retired. Him and Johns, Andre Johnson, who went to the Colts, retired as well, too. Andre Johnson, to me, is a Hall of Fame. He has over a 1,000 catches, had a great career. Foster's career wasn't good enough. I, maybe I hope he comes back, and we'll see what happens. Um, just a little synopsis of the championship games. The Patriots kicked the snot out of Pittsburgh. It really, really disappointed me. I expected a game. They couldn't stop the passing game. And like people were saying, drop back in a zone? Yeah, that's smart. Give Brady four or five seconds to throw the ball. Who, who the hell ran their game plan? Tomlin's a chooch anyways. He doesn't know what he's doing. But their receivers, like Hogan, Chris Hogan destroyed them. Not that he's an awful receiver, but he's, he played like he's freaking, he played like Julio Jones, basically. Very impressed. All right. Well, thank you all for watching this edition of Jack Rigo Productions. I appreciate it.